So how does all of this concept of chirality manifest in comparing two different molecules? For this, we need to discuss optical isomers. When considering optical isomers, you are comparing two different molecules with one or more stereocenters, or a molecule with two or more stereocenters within itself. Now they are called optical isomers because we will use something called optical activity to quantify chirality. What you need to know is that chiral molecules give a reading when measuring the optical activity and achiral molecules do not. Now let's go through each of these different types of isomers. We start with something called the enantiomer. Enantiomers are non-superimposable mirror images. In other words, to have enantiomers, a molecule must have one or more chiral centers. Now, enantiomers differ at every single chiral center. So if there's one, if there's 20, it differs at them all. Enantiomers of each other rotate plane polarized light with equal magnitude but opposite sign. In other words, if I had an enantiomer that rotated plane polarized light at plus 63 degrees, its complement would rotate at minus 63. Now your hands are excellent examples of enantiomers. You know that they're mirror images. You have your thumb, your second finger, your middle finger, your fourth, and your fifth. And you know that they're not superimposable. You can't put them on top of each other. That's why mittens have handedness to them because your hands are non-superimposable. Now I've got some examples of enantiomers shown below. We'll start with the first structure here. Now, when we think about enantiomers, we can approach the question in a couple different ways. Sometimes we're able to identify enantiomers by inspection, by saying, okay, I only have one chiral center, and I know that they're different than each other. Sometimes you may need to assign the chirality. So let's sort of look at both scenarios here. Here, I have a chiral center, which I've labeled with a red dot. And you'll notice that there's only one chiral center, and it's pretty clear, pretty fast that they are opposite of each other. One has the OH group forward and one has the OH group backwards. But for completeness' sake, let's assign the R versus S nomenclature and see if this is indeed true. So the structure on the left, the OH group will be priority number one. The longer chain will be priority number two. The shorter chain will be priority number three. And group number four is a hydrogen that's in the back, like so. I trace from one to two to three, Group number four is in the back, so I get to keep the assignment. And so this here is R. Now we can do the other chiral center. This is again number one, three, two. Group number four is forward now, and it's a hydrogen. I trace from one to two to three, and it's clockwise. But since group number four is forward, I flip that assignment. This is S. They are indeed enantiomers of each other. Excellent. Let's see how this works with a Fisher projection. I'm going to use highlighter to help us out here. Now here you'll notice at the top and the bottom, they're the same as each other. And so we actually get a pretty easy task. We just need to deal with these sort of crosshairs where the Fisher projections meet. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to monitor certain functional groups. You'll notice the alcohol here is on the left and then the right. So since it's flipped, this is opposite of each other. And the methyl group is over here on the left, like so, and then on the right, like so. So you'll notice that both groups are opposite to each other. These are also enantiomers. So we're getting to see this both with the straight chain form and with the Fisher projection. Last but not least is we have a Newman projection. Now this is particularly hard because you'll notice that we've had some bond rotation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually redraw this Newman projection. So you'll notice here that the front carbon has a CH3 group down. So I'm gonna draw that right there. Then I'm gonna go doot, doot, and a CH3 up. And let's get some colors on here so you can follow along with me for what's happened. And it's as if our creepy eyeball, which you'll remember from not so long ago, 
is staring down this bond here. Now I want to get my wedges and my dashes on here because I'm going to want to assign some stereo centers like so. So this front carbon here, which I will label with a red dot here and a red dot here, has a hydrogen to the left. Now if you were staring down this bond, the group that would be on the left would be behind the page. So the hydrogen can go here and therefore the chlorine can go here. Now, if we're staring at this back carbon, which I'll circle with blue and get a blue dot here, it has an alcohol to the left. And if you were staring down this bond, to the left would be behind the page, like so. And then the hydrogen would be forward. Now, let's redraw the other Newman projection, and then we'll deal with the labeling and making sure that these are indeed enantiomers. So again, let me use some highlighter so you can follow along with me. I'm going to have this methyl and I'm going to have this methyl here. Now the front carbon has its CH3 down like so. I'm going to show the bond and then the one in the back is up. And I'll get some highlighter on there so you can make sure that you are following along with what I'm doing. Redrawing is incredibly complex and so the best thing you can do is just practice, practice along with me. We'll get our wedges and dashes on here as well like so. And again, let's get the same labels on so we know exactly what's going on here. So this front carbon will be red and this back carbon will be blue. And so let's deal with this front carbon here. It has the chlorine to the left, so it should be behind. Hydrogen to the front, which should be here. And then we look at the back carbon and we should get the hydrogen is to the left behind and the OH is here. Now, the redrawing was really tricky, but once it's redrawn, we can do a pretty quick inspection here and say, hey, wait a minute, the backbone is the same. It's this zigzag with a down, up, down, up pattern. On the red carbon, I have a chlorine coming forward, a hydrogen behind, and in the other structure, it's been flipped. And on the structure on the left, I have a hydrogen forward and an alcohol behind, and then it's complement. It's also flipped. These are indeed enantiomers. And so we're able to redraw and see these enantiomers. So enantiomers are non-superimposable mirror images and they're different at every single chiral carbon. So now let's talk about diastereomers, which are the other version of optical isomers that go along with the enantiomer. So a diastereomer is not a mirror image at all all. In order to have diastereomers, a molecule must have two or more chiral centers. Diastereomers differ at some, but not all. So a diastereomer is almost like this catch-all term, where identical molecules are exactly that, they're identical. Enantiomers are different at all chiral centers, and diastereomers sit in the middle where they're different at some, but not all. We'll use the same sort of trick here with the Fisher projection and the Newman projection. So I'm going to first take a look and see that the two ethyl groups here, they're the same. And so I can just track certain functional groups. So this alcohol here is on the left and it's here on the left. And this methyl group is here on the right and is, or pardon me, on the left and is then on the right. So you'll notice that this is different at one of the two chiral centers. These are indeed enantiomers or diastereomers of each other. We'll do the same trick with the Newman projection. Methyls stay in the same place and so I'm just going to look at different functional groups. So here I have a hydrogen and an alcohol and here I have a chlorine and this alcohol. And so I'm different at one out of the two chiral centers. These are also diastereomers. So diastereomers are not mirror images at all and they're a catch-all term for anything that's not identical and is not an enantiomer. Let's see the last example, which will be the meso compound. 
So a meso compound is a super specialized molecule. It is a molecule with two or more chiral centers and an internal plane of symmetry. So a meso compound is a molecule which has chiral centers, but it itself is achiral because it does not rotate plane polarized light. Now, in order to have a meso compound, we have to be able to fold a molecule in half. What I mean by that is we need to be able to draw an internal plane of symmetry here and think about folding this thing in half such that we make what we call the molecule sandwich. Folding this in half, having all the groups sit on top of each other that are the same. The two methyl groups are pointed up. We have CH2 groups that are the same as each other. This is indeed a meso compound. This structure here in the middle has a horizontal plane of symmetry. If I'm to fold this in half about that axis, you're going to see that these two groups would sit on top of each other where everything would align ethyl on ethyl, alcohol on alcohol, and methyl on methyl. And the same goes when I look at the Newman projection. I'll cut here. And if I'm to fold this in half about that axis, you would indeed find that you make the molecule sandwich. The hydrogen sits on top of the hydrogen, the chlorine sits on top of the chlorine. Now, if you have a trouble visualizing this, no judgment. It's pretty tricky to see the meso compound. A trick you can use if you are unable to see the plane of symmetry and fold it in half is you first check to make sure that all the groups are the same about some sort of axis. It's normally pretty simple by inspection. If you take a look at this structure here, which I'm gonna circle in red, you can see the symmetry. You've got the two arms in the same location. In order to be a meso compound, you're looking for one that has opposite configurations at the two chiral centers. And so if you have trouble seeing it and folding it in half, then what you can do is you can assign R and S, and a meso compound will have opposite labels. Now, meso compounds can be quite simple to find with rings and Fisher projections, but get really tricky with straight chains. So I love this tip here, as it'll help you find and solve for meso compounds. So that's it for optical isomers, enantiomers, diastereomers, and meso compounds. Called optical isomers because we quantify them using optical activity, Enantiomers are different at all chiral centers and require one or more. Diastereomers require two or more chiral centers and differ at some but not all. And meso compounds are special type of molecule where they themselves contain chiral centers but overall are achiral due to an internal plane of symmetry, which you can find by labeling the symmetry and folding the molecule in half or by assigning R and S and looking for opposite labels.